Over three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. These oceans contain over 80% of all life on Earth that millions of people around the world depend on in their everyday lives. Because the ocean is a rich natural resource, it provides the world with over 200 billion pounds of fish and shellfish each year. As time goes on and the world population continues to increase, the demand for fish produce will as well. Unfortunately, this causes fish populations to dwindle, which has harmful effects on the fragile aquatic ecosystems. This global issue is otherwise known as overfishing. Overfishing is defined as the depletion of large fish stocks in a body of water over a limited period of time. So when did overfishing first become an issue? Humans have fished aquatic organisms such as shellfish, finfish, and marine mammals for thousands of centuries. The earliest documented human communities depended on fishing were in Australia and Crete around 30,000 and 8,000 years ago. As time progressed and global communities became more dependent on fish for food, fish became exploited. In the 11th century, fishermen would move from one ecosystem to the next, leaving behind lasting damage. In those periods of time, we thought that the ocean was full of fish, the same number of fish as from the shore to the others across the sea. That's not true. There weren't nets, there wasn't side scan sonar, uh, there weren't giant trawls. So now, uh, fishing had a serious impact on, on the sea. Due to the development of better preservation techniques, and improved transportation, commercial fishing began to shift from the local level to large-scale enterprises. Boat design and construction also advanced, along with improvements in fishing gear. Another important development was canning because it allowed long-term storage and large-scale trade of fisheries products. Then, in the late 1800s, steam power ships along with mechanicized fishing techniques and refrigeration, enabled the formation of large-scale industrial fisheries that still exist today. Cod. The cod fisheries have collapsed off New England, and uh, the, it's a terrible, terrible situation. I was just reading an article today also that um, shark uh, and rays are also collapsing due to overfishing and because especially sharks are apex predators, there are fewer numbers of them and they breed more slowly. Um, to take down a lot of them is going to destroy the food chain and their you know, ability to survive in the ocean for a long time to come. As of 2009, the main three techniques used for commercial fishing in the U.S. are trawling, which includes both bottom and mid-water trawling, perch seine, and pot and trap. A bottom trawl is a type of fishing net that's pulled along the sea floor. Fishermen commonly use bottom trawls to catch shrimp and bottom twelling fish like halibut and sole. In addition to these target fish, however, the nets also catch a variety of ocean life that's usually thrown back, dead or dying. Dragging heavy gear across the seabed can also damage sensitive seafloor habitat. Reducing the harmful effects of bottom trawling requires either modifying the fishing gear or limiting the areas where trawling is allowed to protect sensitive bottom-dwelling organisms and their habitat. Bottom trawling is an interesting aspect of things. If it's the only thing going on in an area, and it's going after one targeted species, that's one thing. And it depends, like anything else, on where you're doing it. Here in New England, we have what I would argue are the richest fisheries in the entire world. And I say that for three reasons. One, uh, we fish and go after animals that live in the bottom and on the bottom, and we trap them that are on the bottom, and then we fish for them every single meter from the bottom to the surface. Two, that we have com competition within the fishery. Several people are trying to collect things on the bottom. Scallops, the ocean scallop, pla placopectin, 
uh, two different types of clams, uh, bottom dwelling fish. Uh, so we have several uh, people going after that. Thirdly, there's always the problem of how many fish are there to catch. So it's, it's a three part problem when you, when, you, when you talk about it. Fishermen use purse seine nets to capture schooling fish like tunas, salmon, and anchovies. Sometimes fishing vessels deploy floating rafts called fish aggregating devices, also called fads, to attract fish in the open ocean. Large nets encircle the school of fish, as well as other animals that may be attracted to the fad. The bottom of the net is drawn shut to prevent the fish from escaping, and then the nets and the fish are gathered into the fishing vessel. Traps vary in size and shape, and can be used to catch a variety of fish and shellfish. They're weighted to rest on the sea floor and are often attached to one another to form a chain. Traps have funnel-shaped doors that lead to the bait. They may also have an additional small door that allows fish or lobsters below the legal catch size to escape. When traps are used in appropriate habitats, there are few conservation concerns with this fishing method. Um, what fishing method do you think is most harmful to the environment? It's probably the bottom trawl here in New England is harmful to that environment. Bottom trawling does the most physical damage that you go out and film. But only if you're going to be going after other species. If you're going after only placopectin, the, the big uh, ocean scallop, then it's not bad in that area for those. Because some escape, they'll come back and breed and grow. But if there's other things you want to catch in the bottom, clams, or things you want to put uh, traps for, uh, lobs is one of them and, and other types of things, uh, then it can be a problem. Other people would argue that netting fish is bad because of the bycatch, the fish you don't want that uh, get caught and die or thrown overboard and then die. So it's, it's interesting. In 1976, the Magnuson Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act, the MSA, was enacted to manage the fisheries and promote conservation. The act created eight regional fishery management councils, and in 1996, the act was amended, focusing on rebuilding overfished fisheries, protecting essential fish habitats, and reducing bycatch. Bycatch is defined as unwanted marine organisms that are caught in nets while fishing for another species. In 2006, Republicans and Democrats, led by Senator Stevens, worked together to strengthen the MSA by requiring managers to set science-based annual catch limits that do not allow overfishing. Also, the National Marine Fisheries Service, NMFS, believe that rebuilding all U.S. fish populations would lead to a 31 billion increase in annual sales and support for a half a million new jobs in the U.S. And now there's a number of fisheries rules and regulations that get updated every year through NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. The huge ships today use sonar technology and GPS systems to quickly locate schools of fish. The fish nets that are employed can reach 200 meters deep, and every year the amount of area covered by fishing is twice the size of the United States. The huge commercial fishing ships have processing, packaging, and freezing systems to store the fish, and only when the ships are full do they have to make a stop on land. Because the fishing nets are so large and are employed at a certain size to catch a certain type of fish, other fish of similar size or larger are often entangled in the nets, a practice called bycatch. 
Unfortunately, a quarter of the fish caught are thrown away due to unintentional catching, lower quality, or size. Today, commercial fishing continues to be a major economic sector in many countries. In addition to the large worldwide value of the catch, approximately 36 million people are employed in both the capture and the culture fisheries. Given the current rate at which the fishing industry is fishing, all the fish could be wiped out from the ocean by 2050. We are getting almost half of the world's fish now from aquaculture. When it's done in a sane, sensible, scientific manner, aquaculture can be good. When it's not extremely well managed and well run, it can be awful. For instance, uh, hundreds of thousands of acres of mangrove have been ripped out to put in shrimp farms. Many people have put in giant uh, fishery uh, aquaculture things at sea with nets, where just like on land with cattle and chickens, they overfeed them, over fertilize them, give them medicine to keep them getting sick. They pollute the ocean by having so many in one place. And so uh, aquaculture is a giant, huge question mark. So there's five things about sustainable fisheries. One is pollution. That's caused the, 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 the worst problems uh, at sea for fish that are reproducing. They start as a larvae and they have to grow up and they're very susceptible to things. And then those that actually inhale toxins. The second is destruction of habitat. Many of our sea creatures uh, come to shore to breed in a salt marsh. We've destroyed a lot of the marshes. We've ruined a lot of the bays. Uh, we have a special area of critical environmental concern for Pleasant Bay at Cape Cod, a huge estuary. The third thing is, we don't know how many fish are taken by recreational fishermen. Along any shore, you see a lot of dead fish, and that ones that people catch and leave behind. We shouldn't do that. Then the other thing comes down, it's a two-part answer, is uh, fishing at sea uh, commercially. The local boats take most of the heat because they're the fishermen you see. It's the offshore boats, because they may be international, aren't. And they can sweep the sea clean with nets bigger than this whole building. Overfishing has continued to grow as a major problem in the past decade, and its adverse effects on the environment has expanded due to a lack of public awareness. Although the government has implemented laws to prevent overfishing, it has not stopped illegal fishing and unsustainable harvesting that still plagues the industry today. Also, add overfishing to pollution, climate change, habitat destruction, and acidification, and a picture of a system in crisis emerges. So in order to limit the negative effects of overfishing, not only must the regulations become stricter, but other global environmental problems must be taken into consideration. The future to preserve the biodiversity of our oceans now lies in our hands. So what steps will we take to ensure the safety of our planet?